I don't know if this ever happened to you before, but you know when you have that music idea stuck in your head that you just want to lay down and start working on it as soon as possible, just in case this one becomes your next single. What happens next is you get into the studio, boot up the computer, start Cubase, uh, plug your microphones, your electric guitar, bass into your sound interface, start a new project, create tracks, route everything around, load virtual instruments like synths, drums, and so on, and you start browsing different sounds like pad sounds, a synth bass, drum sounds, just to get the perfect sound to start working on your new song that can potentially be your next single. And the next thing you know is that you've been wasting 30 minutes, 45, an hour trying to set everything up and start recording, and then you lost your music idea. So I don't know if this situation rings a bell, but if it does, stick around because you're gonna love this video where I'm gonna share with you my whole process. You know, the process that I use all the time, I'm starting to work on a new piece of music in Cubase. So my goal is to give you the tools so you can produce more music in less time using some very cool features we already have in Cubase. Hey, what's going on? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Hope you're good, hope you're well. Let's jump right in. Okay, every time I'm ready to start working on a new song, you know, laying down my a music idea that I have that I want to work on, I just open up Cubase, I go straight on File, New Project, and if I click on the More tab, I'm gonna have the list of uh, templates that I created myself and that I can work with. And there's one that I call the Production Template 1, and this is my main production template that I use all the time when I wanna write new pieces of music. So I'm gonna select this one and click on Create. It's gonna ask me uh, to specify one location. I'm gonna use this one, and then it's gonna start loading the template. Now, uh, mine has a bunch of VST instruments uh, loaded, so it's gonna take just a bit longer to load than an empty project. And this is what I get every time I load this production template. All of my synths, uh, drum instruments, um, audio channels, effects, you know, that I work with when producing music is all loaded in that same project. Now, there's way more stuff in there that I usually use on one single piece of music, but everything is already there in case I need them. So I don't need to just browse around and wasting time uh, doing so. Everything is quickly accessible. Now, uh, stick around because I'm going to show you everything that I have loaded on my end in my template. But first, let me show you how I ended up uh, building this template. So to start with, I'm going to just close this template out and create a new empty project. Working with an empty project is the best way to start building your own uh, production template. Uh, so you're going to load all of your virtual instruments that you love to work with on a regular basis, the amount of audio channels you need if you, uh, you record vocals, acoustic guitars, and so on. You're going to load everything in that session. Now, if you already have some virtual instruments that you work with on a regular basis, loaded on other productions you worked on, you can import them over into this empty template, which is going to become your main production template session, basically. So to do so, very simple. There's a feature on the pro version of Cubase that is called Import From uh, Project. Okay, so I'm going to click on File, click on Import, and then look for Tracks From Projects. And I'm going to select the last song that I worked on. Okay, so let's go with this one. And now it's going to list me all those uh, tracks that I have on this session. And I can actually pick and choose those instruments and import them over. So let's say I want to uh, want to keep that uh, 83 drum loop. I'm going to select this one and select some pads here, you know, some synths. And let's go with these, you know, and oh, there you go, a bass, rhythmic bass, I think this one is. And uh, that's it. Next one I'm going to do, I'm going to go on the right side of this import option window and make sure that channel and inspector settings is the only one checked on. I don't want to import uh, all the performances that were uh, that was recorded on this uh, session. I want to keep that empty. I want to keep those uh, channels empty. I just want to import the the instrument itself. Uh, so I'm going to keep that one checked on and the other two unchecked. And import position, you can ignore that. It's not going to matter at all. I'm going to click on OK. And now there you go. All right, a pad. 
So this is a very practical way to import virtual instruments from another project straight into your new template project. Something you can also do is to open an old project uh, where you have all of your virtual instruments uh, loaded and you can select them over. So I have this session where I have a bunch of instruments already loaded. I can actually take all the tracks and channels that I want to. Let's say I want to just uh, select these instruments and then the drums, even audio channels. Let's go with uh, the electric guitar right here that is, I think is already routed to some effects channels. Let's go and select those channels as well. And there you go. So let's say I want to save those channels to be imported later on on a future project. I just go straight into file once they are selected. I go up to file, go down to export and click on selected tracks. And what I'm going to choose here is reference media files. I don't want to copy uh, the files that are in the project. I just want to keep the channels themselves, you know, nothing else, no data, no events whatsoever. So reference media files is what needs to be checked on. And then there's a compatibility with Cubase 10 and new window 10 and older program versions. If you want to, I'm going to keep that on check. I work with Cubase 11 and then I'm going to click on OK. Then it's going to ask me to name that file. Let's name this one VSTi. Just straight to the desktop for now. Click on save. And now if I create myself an empty project, or that can also be an existing project, I'm going to go on file down to import and then click on track archive. And I'm going to go and look for my VSTI.XML. And I'm going to get that same import option window that we've seen before. And I'm going to import the channels that I want to import into my empty session. So let's go with select all. And then again, channel inspector settings checked on. And that's it. Click on OK. And there you go. That's simple. So that's another way where you can import some virtual instruments from another project into a new one. Uh, and build your own uh, production templates. On my end, the import tracks from project is what I usually use. But before that feature was available in Cubase, I worked a lot with track archives. So those are the two options you have if you're using the pro version of Cubase. Now, if we go back into my production template, this is what I have. On top, I always have a marker track an arranger track also, and a chord track. Doesn't mean that I'm going to work on with all of these, but they are loaded if I need to. Next are drums. Um, I have uh, a Groove Agent drum kit. Okay, very simple. And also another type of lo-fi drum kit as well. Okay, that I kind of like. So those are both loaded straight into my template. But I also have tracks and channels ready to go in case um, I want to just record live drums uh, right away. Or, you know, when I'm further into my production idea and I just want to lay down the drums, I can do so right away. So I have this folder right here, which is uh, called Live Drums. And within that folder, I have all of my audio channels loaded, already routed to my interface and in Cubase on these channels as well. So again, if all of my mics are set up on my drum kit, I'm going to be ready to go right away, which is also very practical. Then I have a channel for my electric bass. So let's plug it in. So let's say I want to record a bass line quickly. I'm just going to connect the bass straight into the drummer interface, which has a very good sound of DI. And then that's it. Everything is already routed. And there you go. Perfect. So now I'm ready to go right away without wasting any time creating tracks, routing everything. Everything is already done in the template, which is great. But I also have a virtual instrument for bass if I don't want to connect my bass. Okay, that is also ready to go. And also a rhythmic synth bass. Okay, then I have a channel for the vocal, which is uh, the microphone that I'm actually talking into right now. This one is routed to mono in one, which comes from my interface. Again, everything is routed, and I also have a delay in the reverb um, as a send effect to this vocal channel. Uh, then I have a, a virtual instrument for guitar. I'm not a guitar player, so. 
that can actually be very practical, which is quite nice. And I also have a channel ready to go in case I have Jamie in the studio who is ready to record electric guitars. Same for acoustic guitar. And this also goes into a delay that I actually called Delcy. Look at that. Okay, let me correct this to delay. <laughs> And there you go. Uh, same for piano, already have a piano loaded that is also sending a signal uh, to a delay and a reverb. And same for a Rhodes. Next, the micro freak that is right here on top, that is a hardware synth, is also part of my template. And also can be controlled by the Arturia right here, the uh, main, my main controller. Since this one is a mono synth, I'm actually sending that signal straight into a delay also. And again, everything is loaded in the template. I actually made a video on how you can connect a hardware synth in Cubase if you want to check it out. I'm going to leave the link on top and in the description down below. Then I have a series of different synths, a bunch of different pads from Serum. And then the Juno that I like a lot by Arturia. Then the Detail Juno, it's another virtual instrument, but I really love this, uh, this pad sound. Another one from Serum that has that dark feel to it, a very dark pad that I kind of like, a pluck type of lead that I actually used on my new single coming out soon. And an arpeggiator Moog, which is also very cool. Then there's Signal. Signal's actually pretty cool. It's a kind of a reverse type of synth. With a bit of rhythmic going on, which is actually very cool. It's a very nice, creative uh, synth. Uh, then, of course, if I need some strings. It's already loaded. So this is basically what my template looks like. So now, once you're done loading all of your virtual instruments, your audio channels, effects and stuff uh, that you use when producing music you can actually go on top under file go down to save as template write down a name click on ok i'm going to overwrite mine and the next time you're going to click on file and new project if you go uh, on the more tab you will see your template listed so the only thing you'll need to do in the future is to create a new project by opening this template and start working on your music. Now, some of you are gonna tell me, Chris, you have way too much instruments, part of your template. Yeah, maybe. I like it this way, so all the sounds that I like to work with are right here in front of me. But that doesn't mean that I'm gonna use all of these instruments every time I work on a new song. So if I end up not working on some of these uh, instruments, I can simply disable them if I want to. So let's say I want to get rid of these. I can delete them. That's one option. Or I can keep them in case I need them later on and disable them by selecting the channels, right click, and then uh, go down to disable track. And that's it. You're going to save CPU and you always have access to those channels later on if you need to very practical. You can also create yourself a keyboard shortcut for that command if you want to, which is exactly what I did on my end. And on top of that, if you don't want to see them, you can simply go into the visibility tab on the left zone and hide them. You can create a shortcut to disable track or even combine both together and create a macro to uh, disable uh, the tracks and also hide them all together. All available under key command. Again, don't forget that the import tracks from project and also uh, the uh, track archive features are only available on the pro version of Cubase. So if you don't have the pro version of Cubase, you won't be able to import tracks from project or use the track archive feature. But you can create your own template from scratch 
scratch, load up some VST instruments that you love to work with, and then use the feature save as template that is available on other uh, versions than the pro version. The important thing is to build a template that fit your needs. It doesn't need to be a huge one. And you can actually build more than one template if you want to. For example, you can have one template that has a bit more instruments like the one that I showed you on my end and also have one that is very minimal, you know, a minimal type of recording template that maybe has only one uh, piano virtual instrument and a vocal track, you know, just to lay down some quick ideas. And you can also have a recording template that focuses only on acoustic instruments like drums, guitar, bass, vocals. Anything goes, you know. The most important thing is that you have the amount of templates, one or several templates that fit your needs so you can just start recording ASAP without wasting time setting up a session every time you have a music idea that comes to mind. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share, to like, and also to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Leave me your questions, your comments down below. Until next time, take care and see you.